Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is uh, part five of the JMRI operations tutorial. This will be routes. I decided to redo it because my initial uh, upload seemed to have a lot of uh, skips in it. Uh, I think it was a network issue. So I'm redoing this again, and hopefully everybody is enjoying this series uh, and learning something when we're definitely learning together because I know I spent uh, about three or four hours last night uh, trying to build certain things and get certain things done in JMRI. So uh, I think think I've got it learned. I think I know what I need to do now. But uh, but there's some things that you uh, you know you definitely need to know to uh, get to the end of this to make things come out correctly. So before I go into the the route section, I just want to tell you too that there are a few minor bugs in this program. Uh, you know, boxes getting checked and unchecked, etc. So those boxes, um, you know, if it happened once or maybe even twice, I would say, okay, yeah, you know, I did something wrong. But it it's happening multiple times, and I. I've noticed too. I've actually had to go into the um, CSV files and uh, edit things to get them to like if I delete or add something to get them to stay. I actually go, had to go into the background of the program to get them to stay. So, not sure what's causing some of the problems. Uh, I have to be more definitive uh, on what I'm finding before I could report a bug. So. Just want to let you know that. Don't get frustrated if uh, you see some odd things happening once in a while. So let's open our Panel Pro. And we're going to go up to our Operations. And to Routes. Okay, so you can see that I already have uh, four routes defined within my uh within my routes menu so i'm just going to open let's open the southbound one first okay so the southbound one it's um it's fairly straightforward to do this all you need to do when you open when you add a new route and let's just go back to the menu you you just do add and then once you do add, the uh, route menu will pop up so you can add locations. Okay, so I'm going to hit edit to look at the one I've already done. Uh, I named it southbound. Um, I can put a comment if I want to, which, which you have the option of printing that out on your manifest later on, etc. So... If you want to add a location to your route, you just come down to location, pick it, and then click add location. And so I've done that around the layout. Uh, of course, you have to add the um, departure location and uh, the termination location as well. All right, so my first one is going to depart the yard uh, and this train because it's southbound. Obviously, it's going south. I have said uh, do 20 moves on the departure, so that allows me to have up to 20 uh, pickups for the departure train, which is more than enough for the, the length of my train. I've defined it as a maximum length of 1,000 feet. So, you know, if you, if you take 50 cars, uh, sorry, not 50, if you take 15 cars, and multiply it by 20 you get you get a um let's see that's a 300 foot train so that's uh you know that's more than enough i mean even if i had all 60 foot cars i've i've said 1000 feet of work but i really want to limit my trains to to 20 cars i don't want any more than that so when i depart there's going to be uh, a maximum of 20 moves uh, to uh, to make up the train. Now, the random menu next to it 
what that means is that randomly um this can be 50% of that 20 will happen or 60% or 70% or 80 or 90 or 100. So randomly, um, <clears throat> the program will choose um, what percentage of those 20 cars it wants to um, it wants to have as pickups for the departing train. So that's why I said a random number of 50. Uh, you can uh, you can actually turn that off if you want to. Uh, if you uh, and by default it is off. So if you want to start with the random set to off, do that. Uh, by all means, there's no there's really no reason to to set this if um, you know, especially initially. Uh, the program will still do what it needs to do without the random being turned on. So, and you can come back definitely and experiment with it, uh, which is what I've done. I've gone back in here several times and changed the number of moves and the per random percentage, um, you know, just to see what happens when I, uh, later on when I build manifest for my train. All right. <clears throat> So the next column, uh, pickups and setouts. So the pickups, obviously, since this is the uh, beginning, it's only going to be pickups. There's no going to be no setouts. Uh, so that's why I uh, define that here. And I would imagine that the program would know that, uh, but this forces it to know it. So. <laughs> All right, I've said the maximum length for the train is 1,000 feet. Um, there's no grade on my layout. Don't worry about the X, Y axis. That's for a uh, dispatcher's panel, so you don't have to do that. Uh, you can add a comment if you want. And all the up and down does is move the location up and down in the list. Okay, and then you could delete the location if you needed to. <clears throat> All right, departing my yard and going south, the first um, the first place I come to is the paper mill. So train still uh, the whole time the train's still traveling southbound. Okay, uh, I've I've said okay, I want to limit it to ten moves inside of the paper mill. Uh, I might I might increase that because uh, because the paper mill is so large. Um, I could uh, I could uh, increase that if I wanted to. And once again, I've set the random to sixty percent. Uh, so of those ten moves, um, it'll go up to sixty percent of it. Uh, or not below 60% of it will be accomplished. So, like I said, leaving this set at off is not going to uh, hurt anything. In fact, I would start it in the off position and just let the program does do what it wants, and then you can go back in and change things as necessary. Okay? And at the paper mill, I do want both pickups and set outs. Okay? I've put in a wait time. Uh, and all that wait time does is extends the times in the routing. Uh, it really means nothing else. I just don't want, the reason I put it in there is because I don't want the uh, the train getting back to, you know, the timing of it getting back to the yard before the other train, the northbound train, departs. Okay, so that's why that's why I put thirty minutes and twenty and twenty and thirty. Okay, because I said my departure times on my northbound and southbound are a little bit different. I think they're spaced an hour or something like that. So uh, the wait time you could leave it at zero if you want. Uh, max length we went over that, and the rest of these are self-explanatory. So I just keep adding uh, until I get back to my. Uh, termination point which is the yard 
the uh, random I've turned off here because I want all the moves uh, to go back into the yard. I, when I want it to terminate, I want all the set outs to go back in the yard. I don't want there to be anything left on the train. And it probably once again knows that, but uh, this forces it. So I'm just probably doing overkill. So there's going to be no pickups, obviously, on the termination, but set outs, yes. Okay, and you'll see that a little bit more once we build trains. All right, so when you're finished, always click the Save Route button, and then you can close it. <clears throat> now, I did a I did a northbound route, which all it does is goes goes the other way. I've also done a refinery route, so I'm going to edit that and just show you that. So the refinery is just a local that runs to the refinery and does nothing else. So it begins in the yard, goes to the refinery, and then and you'll notice the trains traveling south, south, and then the train direction when it leaves the yard, it comes back north. So this is a turn. So I could, you know, I could name this uh, refinery turn, something like that, because uh, <clears throat> so what I want it to do is um, have, when it leaves, at least 14 cars, because that's the max number of cars in my refinery is 14. Um, I want it to leave the yard, go to the refinery, and it can do up to 28 moves, which means it can uh, drop off 14 cars and pick up 14 cars. Um, and then goes, goes turns and goes right back to the yard. And then of course, when it leaves the yard, pickups yes, set outs no. At the refinery, it can do both. When it comes back, it can only do the set outs. <clears throat> So the max length is the max length of the train. And so what I what I did is I calculated um, 62 foot uh, tank cars, which are the longest that I have. And those 62 foot tank cars, if there were uh, 14 of them, plus a locomotive and the caboose. So that's why I set 1050 is the max length for that train. And then, of course, adding the comments and moving de de uh, destinations up and down in the list or deleting a destination is all, all you need to do. Hey, one other thing is I wanted to show you. I have a uh, local switcher. And this switcher uh, is in the yard and works the spur on the other side of the yard and then um, goes back to the yard, obviously. So the train direction, I just put north. I could have put all south. It doesn't matter uh, because I'm I'm going from the yard to the spur right across the main line back to the yard. So I could say north or south. It doesn't really matter for that one. All right. And then I've got 20 moves and the random off on that. So. And that's it. That's all there is to adding routes. And you have to add these routes before you can, uh, before you build your trains, because you have to assign a train to a route. So just just remember that. Let's uh, make sure you go ahead and get your routes built. And in the next video, we will uh, we will look at trains. All right. Well, I hope everybody has a good evening and. Thanks again for uh, watching and joining me on this uh, on this journey together through JMRI operations. Have a good one.